Okay, let's talk a little bit about how we're going to approach uh, aircraft performance in this particular uh, section or course. So there's a few different ways to approach a problem. Um, and, and each has its own benefits and each has its own drawbacks of the ones that I'm going to talk about today. So let's consider um, the difference between using an equation to learn and uh, to calculate something about aircraft performance versus a simulation. And actually, I'm, I'm going to tailor this example to aerodynamics because it should be something you're fairly familiar with. So let's consider that uh, on this side here, we have a box that represents CFD. Okay, this is computational fluid dynamics. This is a numerical, this is what people use generally to do computational aerodynamics. Okay, so we have CFD on this side. Now on the other side, uh, we're going to have an equation. And if you'll recall back uh, to your aerodynamics, uh, we're going to talk today about the induced drag. Okay, so from Prandtl's lifting line theory, uh, we learned that the induced drag is CL squared over pi e r a. And you know, in fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna make this just a little bit more general. Okay, so we're not going to talk just about induced drag. We're going to just talk about drag. Okay, so the equation for drag looks like this: C d naught plus C d naught l C l plus C l squared over pi e r a. Okay, where this last term, of course, is the induced drag from lifting line theory. Okay, so if we have a, a wing and we want to figure out how much drag this wing produces, well, one approach we could take is to input the wing into CFD. And the way we do that is we make a model of the wing geometry um, and we do some meshing and we plug that into our CFD code we set some settings in our CFD code, and it spits out a drag coefficient. Okay, great. So the question then is, what did we learn from this process? Well, we learned that to a, a fairly high degree of accuracy, generally with CFD, for this specific wing geometry, we obtain this drag coefficient. That's about all we've learned. <laughs> Uh, if we wanted to learn more than that, we'd have to run several different cases and look at trends. But CFD, if you're familiar with it, is is generally not a very uh, fast process, and it takes a lot of computation, which in business terms amounts to money. Okay, so it's it's kind of expensive. Um, now, I, I do want to mention CFD is extremely valuable and extremely important um, when you're doing uh, later design phases of aircrafts and wing, aircraft and wings um, because it, it gives you a lot of information about that very specific wing geometry. Now on the other hand, if we have an equation and we want to find the drag, well of course we plug in um, wing information I guess. We, we, need, we need some of these parameters that are part of, wow, informations some of these parameters that are part of this equation. We plug this in, and again, we get out drag. But the real value here is not that we get out drag. The real value here is the equation itself. Okay, so from this equation, we can learn a whole lot. Well, number one, we can learn what things are important in calculating the drag. For example, we can learn that the aspect ratio is extremely important in calculating the drag. This efficiency factor, which is a function of the shape of the wing, like the taper ratio, is important. And of course, the lift coefficient is important. And we find that the lift, or that the drag is parabolic, or nearly parabolic, with lift coefficient. Okay, so these are valuable things, right, to learn. We don't learn these from CFD unless we run lots and lots of cases. But we can learn them from this equation. So um, in this course, we're going to focus on deriving equations that, it, that describe the performance of the aircraft uh, and then 
trying to figure out how we can maximize or minimize certain performance characteristics. And the value of deriving these equations is not necessarily that we can you do plug and chug with these equations, but that we learn something from the equations. So I want, as you go through this uh, section, pay attention to uh, not just this video, but later videos as well. Pay attention to the trends that you see or the things that you can learn from equations, okay? Um, and the, the equations that we do, although they are approximate, have an accuracy that's appropriate for conceptual or preliminary design, very early design phases. Um, but later on, of course, we would use these simulation tools such as CFD to get more accurate um, values once we have a design nailed down. Okay, so um, just quickly, I want to go through the process that we're going to take in this course. So let's imagine we have an airplane. You guys are going to get really sick of my airplanes. Okay, so we have an airplane flying. Okay. Um, so the process that we're going to take in this course is first we are going to look at our airplane and we're going to draw a free body diagram. Okay. And the four main forces that we're going to look at are uh, thrust. I should do this a different color. Sorry for the uh, kind of the clunkiness of it all here. Okay, let's do red. Okay, so, uh, oops. <laughs> Sorry again. All right, here we go. Third time's a charm. Okay, so we have thrust. Um, and then we have drag. And we have lift. And we have weight. Okay, so these are our four main forces. Okay, let me label them real quick. Weight, thrust, lift, drag. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to draw our aircraft. We're going to put on our forces aligned appropriately. In a lot of cases, they will not be aligned this way uh, particularly, but we'll align them appropriately. And then we're going to, from that, derive an equation for a certain design characteristic or a performance characteristic that we're concerned about okay so we come out with an equation from this derived from the free body diagram and then what we're going to do is we're going to try to maximize or minimize uh, excuse me maximize or minimize that performance parameter depending on what we care about okay so just a quick review on how this works. Um, let's say we have a function on, an, on some axes here that looks something like this, okay? Um, and this, this is here, let's, let's give an example, right? So this could be the, the uh, drag is a function of the lift coefficient. The drag coefficient is a function of the lift coefficient, right? So we mentioned that it's parabolic, right? So there's a minimum here. And what we want to find is that minimum. Well, the way you do this, if you'll remember back to calculus, um, is you invoke what's known as Fermat's principle. And uh, I guess this is actually really one of many of Fermat's principles, but <laughs> for this course, this is the one we care about. And what Fermat's principle allows us to do, and I, I apologize to any mathematicians out there, I'm being really kind of fast and loose with the definitions here, but what we're going to use this to mean is that um, we can find a maximum or minimum of a function f of x by taking f prime of x and setting it equal to zero and then solving for x, okay? And that'll give us the x at which f prime of x is zero, okay? So let me switch these to x and y just so that we avoid any confusion. Okay. Now, just a quick example, right? So if we have the function um, f of x equals x minus 2 squared plus 1, okay? And we want to find the minimum of it. So the way we do that 
is uh, we take f prime of x, which is 2x minus 2, and then we set that equal to 0. So solving for x, we can cancel out the 2, and we find that x equals 2. Okay, So we know we have a minimum or a maximum at x equals 2. And the way we find out what that minimum or maximum is, then we plug in, plug it back into f of x. So f of 2 equals 2 minus 2 squared plus 1, or um, f of 2 equals 1. Okay? So we know that there's a local minimum or maximum at 2, 1. And in this course, we, we are going to just kind of heuristically determine whether it's a minimum or a maximum from intuition on the function. And in most cases, we will have intuition on the function. Okay, so uh, that's the process that we're going to follow. And we're going to apply it to all sorts of things. So um, just another quick mention here. This is something that we can use all over the place. So just another example, consider the lift to drag ratio is a function of airspeed, which we'll talk more about, but, um, sorry, airspeed, lift to drag ratio. So for most aircraft, this looks something like, something like that. All right, so there's a maximum here. Well, the way you find this is you derive an equation for the lift to drag ratio, take the derivative with respect to the velocity, set it equal to zero, and then we can identify the velocity at which we have a maximum, plug it back in and find max L over D. Okay, that's just another example. We're gonna be doing this a lot in the course, so um, you'll get lots of practice.